So I'm going to show you some demonstrations about angular momentum. When we do linear momentum, you know an object has linear momentum because it can hit something and cause the other thing to move. I mean, yes, we can calculate linear momentum, mv, um, but really momentum only matters when things are, are, are colliding into each other. Now, an object has momentum because it wants to keep moving in a particular direction. It's, it's like inertia, but, you know, it has velocity in it as well. Well, a moving wheel has angular momentum. First of all, and again, I can't prove this to you, uh, you can't feel it as you can in person, but if you have a wheel, spin it pretty fast, and then if you try to point it towards the ceiling, and I'm actually going to move it towards the ceiling. It didn't move to the ceiling, it moved to the side. I'm now going to try to point it towards the floor. It's fighting me. So it wants to continue going this direction along the axis. Now, if you'll notice, it's spinning this direction. So we can say that's the angular momentum. If it was going the other way, that's the angular momentum along the axle. We call that the right-hand rule. Now, to show you that it actually has angular momentum, notice it wants to keep moving. This is like a gyroscope. It's also how they keep uh, satellites aligned in space. Okay, Or we can suspend it. It does this procession thing where it starts to move around. Okay, this is also why a bicycle keeps going. Uh, it's easier to ride a bicycle when it's fast than when it's slow because it, it keeps upright because it has that angular momentum. You think it's just a, a little bit of magic when you're a little kid and you start moving quickly. And it's like, oh, I can stay on the bicycle. And it's because you have angular momentum. Apparently, motocross uh, riders, when they're a little unstable, they'll gun their engine. It causes their wheels to actually be more stable. Now, uh, let's talk about that procession real quickly, and, I'm going to show, and I know that there's more complex math involved with this, but let me show you an easy way to, to figure out which way it's going to turn, and likewise we'll do it on the wheel here in a second. Now right now, before I put it onto the, let's say that it's spinning this direction, you'll notice that it is, has horizontal angular momentum. It is not vertical. Uh, horizontal is not vertical. Um, and then, when, if I grab it from this side, it's spinning like this. I grab it from this side, it starts to pull downwards due to gravity. You can see that it now has negative vertical angular momentum, while beforehand it had zero because it was horizontal. Well, if we now have negative angular momentum, there must be positive angular momentum to make up for it, and that's why it moves this direction. Let's verify that theory. So it's becoming more negative. And there's the positive angular momentum to make up for it. And obviously, if I can pull it from the other direction, it will do the opposite. Because now, it's spinning. this is negative angular momentum, the procession. And notice, when it falls, it will have positive angular momentum. You can see this as well when you're in a chair. I get this moving very fast. may or may not turn very well, I'm not sure. That one didn't work at all. There. Notice it moved. This chair is not great. But it's spinning this direction, I'm sorry, this way, and I spin the other way. You can see it a little bit. The chair is absorbing. Other two demos that we can do here. I take a couple of books. Now we'll talk about conservation of angular momentum in a different way. I start myself spinning, and then I'm going to bring the books in. Notice I speed up, I slow down. This is just like the ice skater that pulls their hands in, etc., and they speed up. Now, in angular momentum, uh, our main equation for angular momentum is moment of inertia times angular speed, or I omega. Here, my, my moment of inertia is high because the, the point masses are out far. I bring them in, the moment of inertia goes down, the angular speed goes up, once, once again. Now, another uh, very common physics question that, that we've all seen is you have a disc, a very large, say, a merry-go-round, and there's a person standing at the outside of the merry-go-round, they walk to the center, or they walk from the center to the outside. We have this demonstration here that we will prove this we have a constant velocity vehicle. This will go from the outside to the inside. And then we have a pin here. And this pin will give you this, you'll be able to see the speed of the platform. And then I will pull the pin and you'll see what happens afterwards. Okay. 
notice how fast it's going? I pull it in, and the platform has slowed down. Let's do it one more time. Let's do it one more time just to make it obvious. I may have to do this. Oh, I still have it there. For those of you that might want to make something like this, I actually did this with a Pasco platform, but whether or not you could do this with a Lazy Susan and some boards, I don't know. Many of you are very creative. So once again, and notice how fast it's going, and it slows down. Exactly as predicted, just like the person walking across the platform.